coming to you from beautiful Southern California, recorded in front of an 8x10 glossy of a live studio audience. This is The Dynamic Duos, a movie talk show that is exactly like all the others, but they don't have the host with the most, the host you'll want to toast, a man that needs no introduction, although we will anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, Anthony DeJoya. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? This is the very first episode of The Dynamic Duos, a movie talk show pretty much like all the rest. I'm your host, Anthony DeJoya, but uh, it takes more than one to make a duo. I can't do it by myself. I have a great host with me, a host that uh, does pretty much the same as I do. He covers film. He works all in the world of film coverage. He does so much, in fact, that I had to pretty much write everything down that this man does so that I wouldn't forget everything. He manages his own YouTube channel. He operates the Rama Screen of official website he uploads daily on both of these he does movie and tv reviews he does news coverage interviews premieres red carpet events press junkets there's more film festivals anniversary events he does editorial pieces trailer discussions and much more he just started doing some uh, q a moderating recently he covers those as well and he hosts the rocking it with rama screen live every sunday uh, my very first guest, thank you so much for joining me. What's up, Rama? What up, Anthony? Uh, you forgot, I also sell stuff on eBay. <laughs> One more thing. See, I knew I was going to miss something. That's why I had to make this long list, and I started writing it, and it got longer and longer and longer, and I was like, I'm going to have to take a couple breaths to get this out. But thanks so much for joining me. How's your day going? Good, good. Thank you. Uh, the weather is nice. It's much better than this past week's gloomy Gotham City weather this past week. So I love it. Yeah, we're not used to it down here in Southern California. The rain all of a sudden. It's like other people in parts of the country, yeah. they're like, they don't know what they're complaining about. It's two days of rain and it's all sunny now. and We got rid of it. But it was a rough week for us. It was. I, I mean, any minute Batman was going to show up. It was that gloomy. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. There's actually one thing that I left out on this list, and that is... You're now a U.S. citizen. You yes. got your U.S. citizenship. Uh, congratulations on that. Thank How was you. that whole experience? It's good until your duty comes around. So <laughs> right now have I'm you, enjoying it. Have you got one yet? Not yet. Not looking Not forward yet. to it. <laughs> no, well, I'm super happy for you for that. I saw your video where you were talking about it, and you just seemed so proud and so respectful to get that. And I think, you know, growing up in this country and being born here, I think that's something that – a lot of people tend to forget I didn't really have that experience and just to you know in the social climate that we're in right now to see someone that's so prideful for it was just awesome so I I knew I wanted to set that aside and speak about it on its own so let's let's Thank get you. to know you a little bit let's let's just pick your movie mind oh, and let's see yeah. where Rama came from tell us a little bit about just how you became into this loving movies were there any movies that stuck out to you well um I'm going to keep it short. And it's a long story, but uh, to, 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 to shorten it, basically, I've been watching movies since I was a kid. I always tell people that I learn English language by watching Die Hard. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, Die Hard is one of the earliest films I, I watched as a kid. And also Terminator 2, Judgment Day is the film that my family can watch as a family together. And so, yeah, uh, I, I, we had a DVD store, uh, rental store nearby that we go to uh, when I uh, live in, in, uh, in Indonesia because I grew up in Asia. And so movies has been my escape, you know. Growing up, I was a nerd. Um, I got bullied into doing other people's homeworks. So when I came home, you know, movies is like, oh, my, my fantasy world, you know, where I could be with my, um, my heroes, Bruce Willis, Sylvester Stallone, Arnold Schwarzenegger. And so... And, uh, and and it goes on till when I'm become an adult and uh, and I started uh, my, my business degree in college and I went to an entrepreneur class and one of the projects was to start up a venture or start up a business. I didn't have any idea or business ideas. So my friend says, hey, you've always loved movies. Why don't you just do blogging movies? I was like, blogging movies, what is that? And so he is a graphic designer. He kind of started out the website for me and the rest is history, basically. Right. That's awesome. And I, I can I can relate to a lot of that, just escaping into movies. That's definitely yes. one of the reasons why I fell in love with just film as a whole. Just You can watch a different movie and go to a different place anytime you want. And it's like I moved from California up to the Pacific Northwest, and it just rained 
almost all year around, you know, so you're just inside all the time. And I had that video store. It was a little Mountain View video store. They had their little section of videos and I would go there and get my WrestleManias and my my Van Dams, my Seagals, my Stallone movies, all of those. Uh, I wasn't always allowed to watch the rated R movies, but I had some friends that had HBO and Showtime and Cinemax. So I would get my <laughs> Passenger 57 and all my R rated movies that I wouldn't normally get to watch. I would do that. But uh, what yes. really, what was there a turning point when you decided that covering film would be something you wanted to do for a, like a career? Uh, yeah, that was probably in 2010 because prior to 2010, you know, the, Rama Screen was uh, birthed uh, or yeah got got uh, designed and made in 2007. So that, that for three years I was just probably just watching movies and then reviewing them on the blog. But 2010 I got invited to cover Tron Legacy. Uh, Disney said, "Hey, you got viewership, you got audience. Come check us. You know, come check out our events." And so from that point on, I was like, "Come." Oh, let me contact other studios and see if I could also cover their events. And so I started knocking on doors, um, uh, meaning uh, uh, sending emails. It's like, hey, my name's Rama. I have this much viewership, this much audience. Uh, can I cover your event? And just the ball just rolling, started rolling from there. Um, but to, to your point as well, uh, uh, growing up, um, just really quick, uh, I remember you know, my friends and I, we love movies, so... We sometimes, you know, because we had like active imaginations, so we, we we acted out our heroes, you know, our diehard heroes or or Terminator heroes, what what have you, and then we we would kind of recite, uh, hey, do you remember that line? And you know, we try to impersonate our favorite movie stars as they say those memorable like, iconic lines. I mean, those things, man. That, that's what I mean by escape. You know, when when things get hard during the day, or what whatever situations came along. Movies are there to just like get you happy again, even even if even if it's horror, even if it's a Oscar worthy movie, you know, it's still it's like, oh, man, you know, for a minute, it can be better again. Yeah. And it it's the same parallels to that as we get older. I mean, I still even now there yes. they may not be movies from the 80s and 90s. Sometimes they are not childhood movies. Sometimes they're just movies in general. And. It, it's still an escape. I mean, I, I could be stressed out from a day at work. I could be stressed out from just other life issues going on. Uh, sometimes it's just like a, a, a part of your life when you watch a certain movie just takes you back to that. Uh, it could connect you with different friends and stuff. And that's why I think like the best parts of just watching movies. And that's why I definitely wanted to talk about movies as part of like something that I wanted to make a career was just because of the fact that there was this always, it's never the same. I mean, people are like, how could you write doesn't it get boring writing movie reviews or talking about movies? And it's like, no, because it's like, I mean, it's a different movie every time. It can exactly. be the same movie, but it's different performers. It's different directors. It's just different, uh, all kinds of different genres. So, you know, when you were talking about knocking on doors, I definitely have sent out those knocking on door emails. I do that basically every day. So what's your, what's a day in Rama's work life like? Um, yeah, what's, your, what's what's Rama's schedule from when he wakes up? Uh, this guy, <laughs> I mean, you're pumping out content all day long. You keep you are my like news line. To, I mean, I get your alerts all day. I'm in the know of everything basically from you. I don't go to like IndieWire or any of the other ones. So it's like when you, you hit that, you hit the floor running. It's like, what's that like? It's funny you mentioned that because my friend said, um, Scott Menzel, he said, like, hey, Rama, you should change, you should change your website's name to Rama Wire instead of Rama Screen. <laughs> because like, I always keep posting press releases. Um, so, yeah, basically uh, waking up every day after doing some push-up. Sometimes I don't do push-up because I'm lazy. <laughs> but <laughs> I go on my computer <laughs> and I start, like, checking my emails for any press releases. If any that I, uh, uh, that's worthy of posting, I'll post them. Um, of course, trailers, you know, I'll post them as well. Um, and then I usually, when it comes to videos, I try to target uh, two videos per day. If not like reviews, it would be like YouTube live stream, you know, right. an opinion or something. And so um, I try to do it, you know, minimum two videos per day. Uh, but yeah, blog, do it anytime. As, as soon as something hits the web, you know, a trailer um, uh, Kevin Hart steps down, whatever news, I post them. I, I try to get online and put up my laptop, go to the nearest Starbucks if I'm on the freeway and, and post them there. And that's, that's what I do. It's awesome dedication. Thank that's you, awesome brother. Dedication. What, what, um, out of all the events you, I've, I mean, I, I live vicariously through 
your videos and your posts and your oh, pictures. Yeah. I was like, wow, Thank that you. looks like a cool party. It's like, wow, that Cheech and Chong 40th anniversary event looks pretty fun. It's like, oh, wow. Hey, sitting in the parking lot watching Die Hard seems pretty cool. Uh, what types of events are your favorite? Is there one or is, or do you like the variety or does one stick out as like, I love press junkets. I like interviews. What really sticks out is like, this is going to be a fun one. That's a good question. Yeah, I, I never put thought into that. I think to answer your question, though, I think um, uh, overall, all of them, I enjoy them. I'm the, like you said, the Die Hard one, that was fantastic. Uh, 30th anniversary screening. And also, uh, um, I think if you want, if I, if I had to put like a top favorite, I always love TV junket. You know, when I'm actually you know, sitting across from the talent and then I love TV junkets more than I do audio interviews because then because I'm, I'm, you know, I don't have time. Not that I'm lazy. I, I don't have time to transcribe and type everything, you know, sometimes. Right. Uh, yeah, that's as I get busier. Uh, TV junkets, you just do some video editing and boom, and you post it, you air them. And I love that. You know, it's so sufficient, so easy. So uh, it's such a streamlined thing. Um, other events. Uh, let's see. This past year. Uh, I love the holiday parties that I just had with Fox Searchlight and other studios. You know, free food, free drinks. I'm, I'm, I'm usually not a party guy because I'm introverted and I'm really shy. That I can't talk to women, uh, even though I like them. Uh, so, <laughs> so I just go there for the food, basically. <laughs> the food and the fancy drinks. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> I, th- I would have to say I think my favorite would be those anniversary events. Oh, yeah. You know, to like to be a kid growing up loving Die Hard and then to be all these years later in the parking lot covering the 30th anniversary for it. And it's just like, wow, I came a long way from as a kid watching that on the couch to covering this event. I mean, you know, with films and stuff, you're like, wow, I can't believe I'm here. I can't believe I'm on this red carpet. I've had those feelings before where it's like that. But I think that just nostalgia of pulling that old love of film directly into like this new age of covering something would be great. And it's like, I'm going to definitely piggyback with you on some of those anniversary coverage events for sure. Let me ask you this. um, Which anniversary event of any movie that you're nostalgic or you grew up watching or loving that you would love to attend? Uh, I was back to the future. Uh, Like if they were to do like, what are we Kind of on like the 35th anniversary of that maybe i think they yes. just had the 30th like a few years ago like something uh-huh. like that where it's just like you know they're gonna go all out it's just gonna be a show um that die hard one would have been cool um if they had like a major goonies anniversary <gasps> party that would be amazing oh. because they they you know they're gonna have like the backdrops and everything would be fantastic i would definitely yeah i saw, I saw your poster in, in the back of ferris ferris bueller's day off anniversary would be fantastic <laughs> that one too. That one too. To like go to the site, maybe if they had like a big blowout where they, you know, coming to America. That was the one I missed when they did the. Uh, uh-huh. They transformed the McDowell's over in Jersey for that. It was like a week. I think it was over the anniversary of the coming oh. to America a few years ago. I that would have been pretty cool. Yeah, oh. that would have been cool to go check out. Um, so I got a game lined up. Let's have a little bit of fun. We got to know you a little bit. Uh, it's called the Association Game. Basically, I'm just going to name an actor or an actress, and just after a couple seconds, just name the first film that comes to mind. How do you think? Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. All right. The first choice is, she's a two-time Academy Award winner, Jodie Foster. Ooh. um, Silence of the Lambs. And the... Oh, do you want me to keep going or just one? Just just one is good. Okay. Because we'll see what you got compared to what I got. We're going to see oh. how in tune our minds are. All right. <laughs> I love this. All right. The next actor up also is a two-time Academy Award winner, Denzel Washington. Remember the Titans. All right. The next uh, actress has one Academy Award, Charlize Theron. Oh, Monster. All right. Very good. All right. The next one, he has no Academy Awards, but we definitely love him anyways. Keanu Reeves. The Matrix. (laughs) Okay. And the last one, uh, she's a one-time Academy Award winner, and she pretty much makes everybody tear up all the time. Viola Davis. Widows. (laughs) 
<laughs> That's all come to mind right now. <laughs> okay. Very good choices. Yeah, for Jodie Foster, I had Silence of the Lambs, too. I mean, I think anytime you think about Jodie Foster, it's like, don't you just always go to that movie? It was yep. just... I have a funny story about that movie. I think that's probably why every time I hear Jodie Foster, I think of that. It was like, I won't say who in my family took me, but I was actually taken to the theater uh-huh. to see that movie and with then? some older people. And, you know, I had seen the Halloweens and I had seen the Nightmare on Elm Street, but that movie just really just... It freaked the shit out of me. I, I, I mean, <laughs> Anthony Hopkins was a trip. That guy's pulling girls into the van. He's all the, he's pulling the, the clothes open to see all these Buffalo Bill. I mean, that movie just tormented me so much. And I never actually watched that movie again for many years until I was probably like in my 20s, like early 20s. I watched it again and I, I appreciated it for a whole bunch of other different reasons, you know, because it's a fantastic film. But yeah, that one was one of those ones for a while. There was like... Eh, I watched that one a little bit too young. Um, I, I um I, I love the because you know there's some more memorable moments in that movie film, but I love that line fava beans uh, fava beans and Chianti. You know, the, yeah, the perfect delivery. Oh. <laughs> he was to- he was terrifying. I just had I swear I had nightmares of him wearing that that mask that he had in just without the walker, and he was like able he wasn't all stretched up and and restrained. Yeah. He was able to walk around, and I didn't have nightmares about a lot of the other ones, but he definitely popped in there a few times. <laughs> you know, it's funny, Denzel Washington. Remember the Titans? Mm. Never seen it. Okay. okay, I need to see it. One of the def- best, one of the best football films you'll ever see. I promise you. But it also deals with it has social commentary. You know, because okay. it deals with racial racial attention. Because um, nice. it's a period piece, I think in the seventies or sixties. Right. So it has that element to it as well, and uh, of course, Denzel. You know, um, he he has that Denzel moment in all his movies. Yeah. So he 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 lifted up what's already a good movie. Yeah, I need to check that one out. I think it came out kind of during that run where there was just a lot of those football movies. Yeah. It was like The Rock had one, and then Matthew McConaughey <laughs> had one, and I think uh, Mark yeah, Wahlberg was one. in one where he was the it played for the Jets. Just a lot of those like kind of dramatic football movies, and I just missed that one. I definitely want to check it out. For Denzel Washington, I said Training Day, not because I think it's like his yes. best movie, but just because you know King Kong ain't got shit on me. I think that was just like I, I remember him. It's like some people you remember them because of that. It's like oh, you go to their signature movie, and then sometimes it's their signature character, and sometimes it's just the line that they delivered the best. But yeah, I mean, it's like when you say Denzel Washington, the first, and it's kind of like, you know, the first thing I think of is Training Day. And it's kind of like with Charlize Theron, too. It's like you said, Monster. I've seen that movie one time. I vaguely remember it. I remember it being like really kind of like a lot of weight to it, kind of powerful. Uh, she obviously, that's what she got her Oscar for, wasn't it? Exactly. Yeah. And it's like, but nowadays, it's like you, for me, you say Charlize Theron. And the first thing I think of is just that fight sequence from Atomic Blonde. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's not the best movie. It's a serviceable movie, but I mean, that scene alone just. Well, the, 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 the stairway fight. Remember yes. the, the one tech one? Yeah. Yeah, that, that stairway fight that goes all the way up into the apartment. Oh. It was just so well done. And it's like she, it, it kind of overshadowed like a lot of her other movies, you know, because she's had a lot of great films. But, and, you know, someone says Charlize Theron, the first thing I picture is her with that hose wrapping that guy up, just slamming him <laughs> all against, uh, against the and wall. Real, real quick, uh, I, I, I don't want to get too, too long to this. I apologize. But I, uh, when the movie Atomic Blonde came out, I had my reservations about it. I had my concerns before watching the film because the last time she did action was Aeon Flux, and I didn't like Aeon Flux. I, this I is a little that. too stylized. Yeah. That movie. I mean, that, and, uh, so um, weird. Um, uh, the girl from uh, Mila Jovovich did another movie similar to that. Yeah, wasn't there, she did like a not that wasn't Resident Evil. I think she did like a futuristic sci-fi movie that had a lot of fight choreography in it. It, it was like one of those ones that kind of during that just time period in film where it was like dance fighting for a while. Yeah, and then it just didn't have that. It was so over it choreographed that it doesn't it doesn't hold up. Um, yeah, for Keanu Reeves, that was the same with me. It's like you said, The Matrix. Ooh. That was a close one. That's I think that's definitely his like most just iconic film for some reason. I just think Johnny Utah in Point Break. Oh yes, <laughs> yes, where he I shoots know. up in the sky. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, just him trying to surf. It's like I don't know. That was just like I think that was like probably the first movie where <laughs> it was like. Um, 
you know, every, he, Keanu Reeves was in, I think he was in an interview with the vampire and he would have his other movies. He had like, uh, you know, Bill and Ted's bogus journey, but I think it was really point break was that movie to where it was like him and Patrick Swayze. It was like, after I watched that movie, I wanted to pretty much see them in any other movie that they did. So Maybe did you like, did you like point break remake? No, <laughs> I, I, you know what? that's a shame too, because I think if that movie That movie wouldn't have been so bad if it was just called anything other than Point Break yes. and the characters anything else. Because, I mean, you can't deny that those action sequences were fantastic. Yeah. I mean, each one. It was a beautifully shot film, but it was just such a garbage story. <laughs> story with just disposable characters, and it just it didn't do anything for me. Um, Widow's a fantastic film. I thought she was great in it. I think uh, Suicide Squad, again, it's oh. a scene where... It just jumps out at me. It's like when she shoots all the FBI agents yeah. at the end. It's like she actually made me tear up in fences, you know, when yeah, she true. was going out there with Denzel Washington and she had her moment where she was tearing up and she was just going off on him. And she even made me tear up a little bit in Widows when she was in that scene right after the husband passes away and she realizes that she's in way over her head in this thing. Uh, but yeah, just oh. the way she pulls out that pistol while Will Smith's just watching and she just wipes out everybody in the room was just cold. See, I, I agree <laughs> with you. I agree. I, you know, of course, and memorable I have, because she sold yeah. it. Yes, I agree with you because I have a thousand and one problems with Suicide Squad, obviously. Um, but uh, she she knocked it out of the park as Amanda Waller because you know I I disagree with people saying like if if people. I don't know if people actually say this, but if people say, oh, Amanda Waller to Suicide Squad is, um, is Nick Fury, Nick Fury to S.H.I.E.L.D. or Nick Fury to Avengers. No, not exactly, because Amanda Waller is a hard, uh, heartless, like cold-blooded, you know, mm -hmm. killer. Uh, yes. Nick, Fury, Nick Fury is just manipulative. Um, so, and Viola Davis really, really embodied that. So, yeah, Suicide Squad was a shitty movie in my book, but she did great. What's been your most memorable interview, either good or bad or just funny or OMG moment? Okay. Which uh, one sticks out? Fan moment? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's different kinds of interviews, right? There's roundtable interviews where you, where you share a table with other press. And there's a press conference where it's like a panel, you know, like a Comic-Con panel. Uh, the talents are up in the front and then a big room of press. And then there's one-on-one, -on -one, which is one-on-one -on -one audio or one-on-one -on -one TV. And so uh, I have a couple of stories that I want to share with you. Uh, first of all, the press conference uh, back in 2011, I think, or 2012. Uh, Tom Hanks directed this movie with Julia Roberts uh, starring in it called uh, Larry something. He, uh, about a guy who came back to college. Tom Hanks played the guy. Um, and so uh, I came, I usually would dress as Superman. Like I have my Superman shirt on and then I have a suit uh, over it. And so uh, from the panel, he saw me, you know, I was like, hey, Superman, I like your shirt, man. It's like, and I was like, hey, thank you, Tom. It's like, because <laughs> because Julia Roberts said to Tom, hey, Tom, there's Superman there. Hey, what's up? And then he shook my hand after the press conference. So that's probably like one of the most memorable. Of course, it's not on camera if it, it's not one on one, obviously. So, it's locked uh, in the head, though. It's, it's locked, locked in your in brain forever. Yeah, exactly. And for, for the camera, for the one on one camera, I want to say um morgan freeman oh my god <laughs> interviewing morgan freeman shawshank million dollar baby driving miss daisy i was just in in awe i was like oh yeah i'm, I'm just so glad that uh because i always have this problem because you know english is not uh english is my second language so sometimes i would stumble on my grammar or my enunciation but so prior to i kid you not man uh prior to entering the room of the interview Uh, you know, because I have to stand on uh, in the hallway with the other press. You know, we have to be stay. We have to stay quiet because the, the interview is going on inside. And so I just mumble, 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 trying to you know, recite my <laughs> my question in my head and in my lips. It's it, but it's yeah, it's fantastic. Those are probably the two most memorable moments. Uh, uh, least favorite? I can't think of any. Um, I know that if you ask me, people always ask me, "Hey Rama, are there celebrities who are jerks that you've met?" Um, yeah, uh, Will Ferrell is one of them, but I didn't interview, I did not interview Will Ferrell that day. I just met him and he was, he, he seemed like he was not in the mood. Maybe he had a long day or he was troubled by some situation that I just happened to, you know, came up to him during that troubled uh, mood. So, uh, but yeah, he, he was jerkish to me, but you know, 
I didn't take it personally. But yeah. other than that, everybody else was pretty cool. That's awesome. That's why it's like I say I watch your interviews because you have like that. Um, the very first red carpet event I covered was uh, the San Diego International Film Festival. Yes. And I lined up along the, the the rope and I had my tiny little piece of paper that said silver screen analysis. And I was so proud and I was so sweaty and I had already <laughs> changed it to my second shirt and it was San Diego. So it was like 80 degrees and I was so nervous that I didn't talk to as many people as I wanted to just because I felt like I was like, okay, I'm all sweated out and I'm all the way down here at the end. And it was so nerve wracking, but awesome at the same time. And it's like, it's gradually gotten better as I've done more. Yes. But it was like, what was your very first big event that you covered? Were you nervous? How did it go? Uh, tell us about it. Yeah, I can't. I can't remember the first junket because I've covered so many. Uh, like I said, Tron Legacy is probably the first that I can remember, but that was not a junket. That was probably that was a red carpet premiere, and so um, and that, back then I did not do any video. I was doing just a uh, written blog, you know. So I was with my, I, I had my audio tape with me. Uh, so that's probably the 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 oldest of the event that I can remember doing, or the first event. And then the rest is kind of able to blur. <laughs> so and, for that uh, first that first five months or so, was it kind of nerve wracking? <laughs> you know, I want to get. What time do I get there? Where do I stand? Is people watching me? Because I always feel like, oh, they're gonna be yes. like, what is he doing here? Like, I feel like I stick out. It, is that just a common thing? No, no, no. You're right. I'm sorry. You are so correct. Okay. Thank you for bringing that up because, um, you know, because I'm not Entertainment Tonight. I'm not Mario right. Lopez. You know, I'm not Access Hollywood. So there's always, uh, uh, for me, I don't know about you, but I feel like there's a self-esteem thing going on for me. It's like, oh, man, you know, uh, um, I guess, you know, it's... Uh, I, uh, man, look at the, look, 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 look at all these big boys next to me. Like, you know, get, get out of here, Brad. <laughs> and I'll be like, oh yeah, I'm sorry, sir. Yeah, you're right, you're right. I'm not supposed. <laughs> but so it took me a while to finally, um, you know, say like, hey, you know what? Screw you guys. I uh, I got my press badge. I got my spot. You know, I'm not going anywhere. I'm gonna be here. So it took me a while to actually find that uh, or gain that confidence. But yeah, I'm with you there, definitely. Yeah. And, uh, and by the way, San Diego Festival, uh, let's let's do it, man. You and I together one of these years. Yeah, the they, they changed the month on me this year. That's right. And they moved it up and it completely threw everything off. But yeah, next year I'm definitely gonna be locked into that because yeah, it was I, I enjoy covering it. It's so close to home. And you know, you cover pretty much a lot of the film festivals up and down Southern California, right? That's true. That's true. Which ones any ones that stick out to you as your favorites? As far uh, as just the atmosphere that they create, just you know the proximity of the theaters from in one another. Uh, on, uh, I cover all every year, so usually LA Film Festival, but unfortunately they shut down LA Film Festival recently. Uh, but I also cover Newport Film Festival, and um, um, of course San Diego. I just mentioned, and I'm gonna cover Santa Barbara. I cover Santa Barbara Film Festival, and I just applied for Palm Springs. Uh, we'll see if I get approved for that one. But anything locally, you know, within the radius of Southern California, I try to go there, you know. Nice. And, and and the thing is with film festivals, uh, not, necess not necessarily just the big movies, the little indie guys, you know, they, they love any coverage they can get. So they'll be like, really yes. like, hey, Rama, come over, you know, yeah. we'll, we'll treat you food, you know, we'll give you a parking spot, you know, come come cover our film, you know, so that, yeah. you know, I, I, you always feel like big, you know? Yeah, you're, aim you're entertainment tonight over there. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, I'll, hey, ain't nothing wrong with that. I'd love, plus it's like, I love film festivals because I just love going to watch the movies. Yes. You know, I love when the lights go off and the theater kicks on and that, you know, credit starts going. It's like, okay, hey, let's get it on. You know what I mean? Well, that actually leads us into our first main topic, pet peeves and annoyances at the theater. We all have them. You go to movies on a weekly basis, just like I do. What's your, you know, two or three top pet peeves? Okay. Uh, I know that people will generally answer this with, you know, cell phones or people speaking or talking, you know, in the theaters, but, you know, and, and that, that's cool. You know, th those are our pet peeves. Uh, but my pet peeve, in addition to those are, uh, one of them is, um, previews that go on too long. I hate that. I hate it, you know, cause I, I've gone to watch a movie and the previews are like 11 trailers or 11 previews. <laughs> I was like, what yeah. is going on? It starts, yeah. it's supposed to start at 12. 
but it doesn't. The movie doesn't start to like twelve twenty, and that's mm-hmm. not, the previews are even after the regal first look or the commercials that the theater has. Yeah. And I hate that. I hate that. I'm like, I got plans the rest of this evening. You know, I, I the the movie's supposed to end by three o'clock, and I'm supposed to yeah. go to another friend's house. So it just messes up my schedule. I hate that. So, and my second pet peeve. Uh, I don't know if you have gone to theaters where or advanced screenings where they have like uh, a radio station giving out you know giveaways. You know, yeah. Of, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> KFW one point three FM, and they'll have like a show before the movie. I freaking hate that. They'll like do the shoots out shirts, you know, from their sh- uh, shirt guns. <laughs> I the hate that. that. Those are those shirts that you can never iron the wrinkles out. <laughs> Yes. I got a, I got a shirt from a sporting event like three years ago. I've washed it like three times. I've ironed the crap out of that thing, and it still has just the creases in it. But yeah, I totally get you. And I'm kind of on the same page with it, not necessarily being cell phones and people talking. But I think my number one pet peeve is just all the new loud snacks that people sell at the theaters now. And then the yeah. way people eat them so rude and just... You know, when you're at just watching a very suspenseful moment or a very like emotionally impactful <laughs> moment, and then you just hear like, <laughs> the bag of chips, or when they bring you? their they bring their own snacks in and they're opening up the grocery store plastic and rooting to the bottom of it. Yeah, and yeah, and nacho guy at the theater. <laughs> Can I like, tell you, you don't need the nachos because it's just like why would you get the loudest snack you could get and that was one of the ones that's like really whatever happened to like the old days of like you know waiting till the guns go off to start digging in in there and, and doing all that that was definitely one of my pet peeves that i've noticed getting increasingly more frequent this year compared to time before i mean you've always had the loud drinkers that try to get every sip The other one that was like another real pet peeve of mine was like, and it's not really a pet peeve. It's just my preference, I guess. It's like the luxury theaters. I mean, I enjoy the the reclining seats and all that stuff if I can go get that. But like the ones that have like in theater service, uh-huh. I went to a few of those this year and I found each one to be just distracting it drove me nuts it's like you got the amc theaters with the reclining seats if you can go to like the art house theaters the landmarks and stuff that have the reclining seats i dig the reclining seats mm. but i don't know about the in theater service it's just <laughs> it's been very distracting to me Do you have I, that issue? Uh, oh yeah yeah i was gonna tell you uh, share your story if i may um uh when you mentioned when you mentioned the uh, the loud snacks um dude I kid you not, because uh, I had my popcorn watching A Quiet Place, and I didn't want to, like, I didn't want to piss off anybody. <laughs> it's just like because you know it's a silent movie basically, and you're just like, where, where's the action? Come on, I want to eat my popcorn because <laughs> you yeah. don't want to <laughs> upset anybody. Um, as far as the recliners and the luxury seats thing, I, I get you, man. And, and you know what? Um, I, 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 that's you know that's why it gets to the topic of 4DX. Sony is releasing a bunch of movies next year with the smell o vision the, the 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 seats that you know not just luxury but actually can move and I find that I, I I've done it once for Meg and the thing is I don't know if I could endure two hours of that you know if it's like a theme park ride where it's like only like five minutes I'll be okay yeah. but shaking like for 90 minutes or two hours I would get annoyed oh, uh, yeah. so that's a pet beef too yeah, and I haven't done that. I had to try that. And it's like, and I get it. I mean, I'm more of just a person. I'd rather go before the movie and talk about, have some dinner and a couple drinks and talk about what I'm expecting or go have dinner after and and talk about what we just watched as opposed to, it's like, I don't know. I don't want to be having a big plate of food and dump something <laughs> on my lap and then sit there for 45 minutes not knowing that I got like a pile of cheese on my jeans just soaking in. You talk about the a quiet place. That was actually pretty a cool experience in the theater because that was a packed out theater for that one, and I was about two thirds of the way up. So when the screen would get bright and the noise would kick, you could just see hands going yeah. up, <laughs> and it's like you know everybody's still a little bit of faith left in humanity. It's like they at least get the gist. 
you could hear every single person clear their throat and sniffle throughout the whole movie. And it felt I've never heard so many sick people in a theater just because you normally a lot of them are muffled out. Yeah. But you could literally hear every clear of the throat, every cough, every sneeze, which is fine. It's just going to happen. But I, I thought it was funny there were any times noise would kick up or something. You could hear the you could just see the shadow of people's <laughs> hands like, oh, this is my chance to stuff it in. <laughs> they get the, yeah, they get the idea. And I want to I want to before we move on to the next topic, I want to I want to share you also. And and I apologize. This might sound bragging or boasting, but um, uh, to the chair kicking thing uh, in 2015, I went to the. Uh, press screening for Star Wars: The uh, Star Wars: The Force Awakens at Walt Disney Theater, and 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 I I met Conan O'Brien. It's like, hey, Conan, I'm a big fan. Hey, how are you and Conan brought his own uh, his whole family there uh, to the screening, and he happened uh, ended up sitting next behind me, right behind me, and a couple times or maybe more than a couple times, he would kick my <laughs> seat. <laughs> And, you know, I'm thinking in my head, it's like, okay, he's a tall guy, and Conan is really tall. And I was like, maybe, you know, that's that space problem thing, you know, his leg is really long, his legs are wrong. So maybe I was like, I'm going to, but after a few times, like, oh, my God. But then again, I don't want to make a scene because it's Conan O'Brien. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I think I would give Conan the leeway. And it's like, exactly. well, you know, I, I may have been completely distracted throughout this whole entire damn movie, but... I'll always have the story of Conan O'Brien kicking my chair. <laughs> exactly. And it's like, that's what you say. It's like, you know, I was at this movie and this guy was just kicking the shit out of my chair from the beginning of the movie to the end of the movie and just lead with that. And you're like, why didn't you say nothing? Well, because it was Conan O'Brien. <laughs> and then you just close it out like that. <laughs> that's how I would deliver that story. <laughs> you, you, you lead in, you lead in with the, you lead in with the setup, and then you knock it down at the end with the name drop. <laughs> Thank you, bro. All right, that. let's let's go into our next game. So in this one, I'm going to give you two options. One of them can stay; the other must go forever. So I'm going to name them off. I'll give you, I'll talk about five seconds and give you some time to think about it. And then I'll ask you which one you want to pick and we'll go from there. Okay. So uh, I, I pick the thing and then you ask me the thing or. Well, no, I'm going to pick the two things that you have the option of and you have to pick which one is disappears and is gone forever. Oh, okay. All right. From all memory and all existence. <laughs> all right. Some. Some of them may be easier than others, but I'll, I'll, I'll name them out there for you. I'll give you about five seconds to think about which one has to be erased from. You don't have to go right off the bat because some of them may be a little bit tougher to think about. But okay. I'm going to start you off with an easy one. You got right. two great films, but one of them has to go between Deadpool and Logan. Deadpool. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I like that choice because I picked the same thing. Yes, I love I think Logan. I, I think the chances of being able to redo a Deadpool again is much easier to duplicate than yeah. being able to pull off. Don't you think? I think so. I mean, Hugh Jackman is so Wolverine, man. I can't picture anybody else. He had and that I, whole run of films leading up to it. And at the end of at the end of Logan, you know, when you know you see the the grave site, you're just hoping for the three claws to like show up. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like it's not over it's like he's not all the way gone yeah i mean it's like i think deadpool was a great movie it's lightning in a bottle but yeah. i mean logan is just like the perfect send-off for just all his performances so, yeah i agreed with you i definitely I agree that one. all right this one's a little bit different the next one is one career or the other has to go forever okay between john claude van damme and steven seagal oh so steven. what you steven. got even Seagal's got to go. I'm with you too, man. <laughs> go. I definitely a hey, mark for death, out for justice, above the law. His Under first six, six movies are great. But man, he's had, that guy's been riding the DVD straight to video shelf for what? Since the late 90s? Yeah, and, and, and his movies are, you know, because he always co-stars with rappers that yeah. are not famous. Oh, yeah. And then, and then, and then he's... His uh, choreography, martial art choreography, is like 
you know, uh, nothing really unique or stylish about them. It's the same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the he's sitting in there and it's like, and basically he's just doing one film of each of Master P's No Limit Records crew. He's doing one with Silk the Shocker and just working his way all around. And it's like, we're going to cap it off. Master P's in this one. <laughs> and, and, and I think, uh, you know, you could, you, uh, the same argument probably can be made about Jean-Claude Van Damme, but I can watch Helicopter Kick him doing the helicopter kick a thousand times and I won't get tired of it. Yeah, John claude Van Damme's movies have a charm to him a little bit more. Yeah. I mean, Van Damme wasn't a one-trick pony. I mean, his movies were all kind of the same. I mean, yeah. he did have his Dennis Rodman movie days, uh, double team and stuff like that, but I think he... You know, I thought he had some solid hits, like that one where he's in the country. Uh, uh, Nowhere to Run was solid. He's doing the all the, you know, he had his classics like Blood Sport and uh, Kickboxer. But, I mean, he popped in. He did the, you know, even Street Fighter's totally cheesy as hell. But <laughs> yeah. he, he actually felt like he was doing something good. So it's like, hey, man, if he's buying it, I'm going to buy it. Plus, it's like that movie came out in the height of like my 7-Eleven Street Fighter 2 days. <laughs> And it's like, man, Guile, John claude Van Damme, sign me up all my, day for that one. Sorry, my favorite is actually Heart Target. Uh, because, you know, uh, Jean Claude Van Damme. Exactly, with, with, with yeah. more mullet. Uh, uh, because Jean claude Van Damme's style, or I mean, sorry, trademark movies are tournament movies. You know, he's always about tournaments, mm-hmm. uh, or, as, as, uh, with the exception of The Expendables and Heart Target. So, Heart Target's my favorite Jean Claude Van Damme movie. Definitely. Yeah. And I mean, as a guilty pleasure, Jean Claude Van Damme, the action movie fan that I am, I don't watch many of the any of the Steven Seagal ones. So I wouldn't really know how they hold up, but I will be surprised to tell you that some of the straight to video John Claude Van Damme movies are pretty solid. I mean, All right. he did this one uh, enemies closer where he plays this like eccentric bad guy huh. and it's totally kind of tongue in cheek and it's a little over the top, but it's got um, Thomas Everett Scott and Orlando Jones in it. Yeah. And it's kind of like a simple action movie. And I was like, that's actually pretty good. He did this other one called Assassination Games with uh, Scott Adkins. And it's like, you know, these are like straight to video movies. But it's like, those I, that's an entertaining home watch for me. I mean, it actually shows effort and shows quality. And it's like, I just, I started <laughs> like uh, five minutes of one of these Steven Seagal movies a while back. And I couldn't even. <laughs> he got like three lines in his hair's all spray painted on he's walking around with his hands kind of crossed over and it's just he's trying to sell that same shtick and it, it just wasn't working for me so let's get into our next choice yes. you have to pick between two nicholas cage films okay the rock or con air oh the rock has to go i'm with you too man yes i love con air bro man the, the hair you know, <laughs> I agree with you, and that's funny. We've been uh, totally in agreement on all three of these so far because for some reason, I think Con Air holds up, the cheese holds up better, and I think some of the Bayisms from the other one seem a little tired from The Rock. Oh. I mean, The Rock is like, you know, Nicolas Cage is a great character in that, and Sean Connery's excellent, but I don't know, the movie itself is just a little too melodramatic, and just... And too- the, I, too uh, drawn out. Yeah. Yeah. Out. And Con Air has just got it's got John oh. Malkovich. It's got a great cast. It's totally just it knows it's cheesy. He's got his hair <laughs> extensions in there. I mean, it's just it just reeks of like the 90s, you know, and it kind of yes. locks it in there. All right. The next one you have to pick between two franchises. All right. Okay. Die Hard or Lethal Weapon. Both Lethal great Weapon's franchises. Lethal uh, weapons gotta go, bro. <laughs> you see, I, I had to. I said Die Hard had to go. No. Yeah, you know, because <laughs> honestly, it's like I think Die Hard had to go just because I think one, two, and three are fantastic. Uh, but I think the last two didn't course. really hold up. But I think it's like if you were to sit there and you were to force me to watch one of these franchises on repeat. I think all four of the Lethal Weapon movies hold up from start to finish. So that's why I was like, it was uh, tough, though. I had to sit there for a second, and I was like, but it's John McClane. And I was like, but it's Martin Riggs. And it's like, and you got Roger Berta. And I was like, and for some reason, the stories hold up better. And it's like, I love Die Hard with a Vengeance. Don't you? Do you think yeah. you like that with Samuel L. Jackson? I thought they were fantastic that. together. Yeah, and but, this is it is the director of the original one, John McTiernan. Yeah. So it's fantastic. Now, I... I 
I do agree with you, though. You made a good point. Um, I mean, I just love Die Hard franchise, so, so I, I have to let Lethal Weapon go. But you are correct. The fourth and the fifth Die Hard movies were, especially the fifth one, it was terrible. The one where they, yeah. where they were in Russia with John yeah. McClane's son, that was just terrible. Um, that and, was the one that felt cheap to me. Yes. It's like Live Free or Die Hard was with the, the plane at the end and all that. It seemed yeah. excessive and over the top, but I would say three-fourths of that movie are solid. Well, the thing yeah. is, uh, uh, the fourth one, Live Free or Die Hard, its biggest mistake was that it, it was PG-13. So yes. it was it was very watered down. John McClane yes. didn't even say, you know, the MF word. So, uh, but, but to your point, Little Weapon, um, I, I remember 1998, I was so concerned about it because, you know, that was Jet Li's big, you know, kind of Hollywood thing, you know. Um, and so, but that fight scene at the end, Riggs, Murtaugh, and Jet Li, <laughs> that was pretty awesome. It was pretty hard. Will it to me, Riggs? Will it to me, Riggs? <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, come on, Riggs, will it to him? I guess I watched that movie like two months ago and I was like, I was doing some reports and I had Lethal Weapon on and it's like, anytime Jet Li was on the screen, my head was turned. And I just, I think it's like a cheesy movie. It doesn't hold, I think it's not as good as the, it's like the the fourth best in the franchise, but uh, it just has such a charm to it with Chris Rock and Joe Pesci in there and just the yes. banter between all the guys. And it just kind of, it's got, it's, plus it's got some nostalgia for me for sure. So yeah, it was tough though. That was the one of those ones where it's like, I'm going to ask Rama. I want to see which one we would have to go. It's like, and I mean, you know, die or, okay. Another side segue yeah. question. Wouldn't you say that technically Lethal Weapon 1 is a little bit more of a Christmas movie than Die Hard? Oh, okay. that's a good point. Um, I think that's an argument that can be had. Uh, yeah. But, but you know, to, to your next topic, of course, I still have to go with Die Hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Die Hard definitely is. And I was, like, I, was get, I was cooking some food the other day and I had Lethal Weapon on. And it's like it has much more Christmas music to it. Um, when Mel, uh, when Martin Riggs is out there um, questioning the prostitute and he gets yeah. shot with a shotgun, he blasts through all those Christmas decorations. <laughs> um, at the very beginning of the film, he's trying to buy coke from a guy that sells Christmas trees. Yep, uh, and also uh, and also uh, um, that's Shane Black. And uh, interestingly enough, Shane Black's Iron Man three was set in Christmas. That's right. Right? That's right. Yeah. I remember Iron that. Man, Shane I remember Black. that. Plus, a and. At the very end of Lethal Weapon, when Martin oh. Riggs is sitting under the shadow of the Christmas tree and he says, we're going to get bloody on this one, Raj. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, I, I, <laughs> I think it's a great Christmas movie. I think people always say, is Die Hard a Christmas movie or not? And it's like, I definitely think Die Hard is a Christmas movie. But it's like people always like, wow, it's like you don't really hear too many people say that Lethal Weapon's a great Christmas movie. But man, it always takes me back. I agree. I agree. You see that that eighties tree with all the tinsel all over it, all those tacky wrapped <laughs> gifts underneath. You know, it's a great movie. Um, which actually gets us into uh, speaking of Christmas movies. Let's talk about our favorite Christmas movies. What do you? It's our, this this time of year. I don't think any of the holidays really are synonymous with movies like Christmases. I mean, there's not a lot of Fourth of July movies or Easter movies out there, but. Everybody loves a Christmas movie. The Hallmark Christmas movies thrive on it. What's the, what are some of the ones that stick out to you? Well, my top three favorites are, of course, Die Hard and uh, Home Alone, the first one, and Love Actually. Those are my top three favorites. The favorite meaning I can watch them again and again and will never get tired of them. You I know, actually have uh, to watch Love Actually. Who's in that? I've heard uh, that name so many times. As soon as you say the names, I'll remember the poster of it, I'm sure. It's all right. It's an ensemble cast, so like a star-studded kind of, you know, where there's a move, one of those movies that have like a lot of characters and subplots crossing paths. So like uh, Bill Nye is in it, uh, uh, and then also Liam Neeson. Okay, um, now Lauren I remember Atkinson, it. Yeah, uh-huh. Colin, Colin Firth, and so and it's um, uh, it's Brit Brit comedy. I'm a big fan of Brit comedy. I I, oh, I have a soft spot. Very and well written for sure. It, Exactly, exactly. And so, and I think this is by the guy who gave us uh, four weddings and a funeral. So the jokes are really good. And nice. so you got to check it out. And um, Home Alone, Macaulay Culkin, of course, you know, it's a classic with Joe Pesci mm-hmm. and Daniel Stern. And uh, um, unfortunately, they could not capture the magic on the second one. I really did not like the Lost in New York <laughs> movie. <laughs> yeah, I kind of, that's another one that I always talk about with my friends. I mean, Home Alone's definitely on my list as well. <laughs> I mean, I love Christmas movies. I got Die Hard on there, Christmas Vacation, 
Lethal Weapon, Friday After Next, I think oh. is one of the all-time great underrated Christmas movies because I think it's just literally a laugh fest from all 87 minutes <laughs> of yes. it. But yes. I think Home Alone 2 is more of a remake of Home Alone than it is yes. a sequel because, I mean, it is beat for beat, the exact same movie <laughs> with different plug-and-play pieces and only it's like uh, Macaulay Culkin is just a little too self-aware in two. <laughs> He lost. Yes. He's not that innocent kid anymore. He's kind of just. He's kind of like a little shithead in yes. part two, to where it's like you know you, you know I'm not really like you as much as I liked you the first time. You lost some of your innocence, I guess you could say. Well, Friday After Next. Thanks for mentioning that, man. That was a fantastic film, and uh, that's a sequel. You know, you don't say that, that quite often about a sequel. And uh, I, man, it's like a Christmas comedy with weed and laugh out loud funny, man. Love yeah. it. And I think that I think the Friday trilogy is one of the great underrated yes. comedic trilogies as far as how many trilogies come out there with, th you know, three movies and be successfully funny. I mean, they didn't all have the same box office returns, but I mean, I think they were able to capture chemistry, laughs. There's so many interchangeable characters in that movie. Like I was just watching that one, too, the other day when I was putting up my Christmas tree. It's got a perfect musical score. I uh -huh. mean, it's just like a, it's a subtle Christmas movie. And it's just wild and great. But, I mean, I like the Goonies or uh, the Gremlins as well. Oh, yes. I mean, I think that's just got that great Christmas vibe to it. Or maybe more I just like it because of all the snow. And it just uh. reminds me of, like, a wintry <laughs> winter movie. Um, I also – I always love watching Scrooge with Bill Murray. Oh, uh, yes. That's, that's a, a classic. Answer. I think Bill Murray's just at his, like, kind of just dry best, you know, just uh. unrelentlessly just delivering that just – He's just a complete dick, yes. but you like him still at the end, you know? I don't know if you watched this too, but uh, I also like the Muppets Christmas Carol. You know, Christmas Carol oh, has been uh, awesome. done in many renditions, but I love the Muppets version. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have yeah. a soft spot for that one. Yeah, that's a, that's a great one. I like, and of course, all the Charlie, I mean, Charlie Brown Thanksgiving, Charlie Brown Christmas Tree, all those great movies to watch. Those ones are the ones that really just pull me back to my childhood for sure. And then, I think. Yeah, yeah. I gotta be honest with you. I know a lot of people hated this movie, but I actually, you know, I'm probably one of the only people, you know, kind of like our friend Zach Pope, who liked The Meg. I actually liked Jingle All the Way. I actually had fun watching Jingle All the Way. It's fun. But I'm probably, I'm, I'm the only one, probably, you know, Turbo Man, Turbo Man, you know, yeah. the whole parade thing. And then I mean, uh, it's got Sinbad. Yes, and Arnold. Yeah. Arnold was beating up all the Santas because the Santas yeah. were all bad guys. <laughs> and I mean, you got the reason that movie, and I'll agree with you because that movie is not great. I mean, I don't think Elf is that great. I think a lot of people like it more than me. But I mean, Jingle All the Way, Arnold committed. Yeah, <laughs> he wasn't. He wasn't like sleepwalking it like a Bruce Willis would in one of these movies. Now, I mean, he was all in. So it's yeah. like, hey. He, he was punching. Yeah. He, he was punching Santa's. He was punching a, de a reindeer. <laughs> yeah, I mean that could you could just change that up a little bit, and that could be like a Black Friday Thanksgiving movie as well. <laughs> yeah, it's like with now, it's like it could be the very first Christmas movie that you watch to kick off your season Thanksgiving night. Because basically, <laughs> as soon as you wake up the day after Thanksgiving or Thanksgiving night when the stores open up, it's Christmas time in there. It's I like agree. Halloween's done. Christmas is already there. It has to be the movie that really kicks it off. And then at the very end of the season, you you finish it off with some bad Santa. Yes. Billy Bob Thorpe. The <laughs> sequel wasn't very good at all. I still think that first movie was a classic with Bernie Mac and John Ritter. Just great, great, <laughs> just dark comedy that definitely isn't for everybody. But, I mean, that's a fun. If you're drinking and you got a few drinks in you and you're at a Christmas party with friends and family and it's like you, the kids are asleep, that's a fun one to put on when you're doing the dishes or sitting around the table talking and stuff like that. Just those lines will jump out at you. <laughs> <laughs> that, that Santa made me uh, view fitting room differently. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I'll always remember I'll always that. John Ritter's walking by, and you can just see the shoes down there, and he's just like, oh, God. I was checking, before, I, before I go into the fitting room, I was, I was checking, like, nobody's there. Yeah, yeah, especially during the holiday season. <laughs> um, so to get a couple more questions for you before we wrap it up here, you were um, recently on the first ever episode of the L.A. Online Film Critics Society weekly show on the Popcorn Talk Network. I watched it. It was a great time. How was that experience? Man, it was nerve-wracking. I was so nervous. Uh, I, I actually showed up four times already. Uh, so yeah, my first you had time... a little showing since then. Yeah, exactly. And my fourth time was 
I was sitting next to this beautiful girl, beautiful woman, uh, a friend of mine named Nikki Novak. Um, so I, I always get nervous, you know, and I, I, I oh, hello, are you there? You're there, are, are, yeah. Whenever I get nervous, I speak very softly. And people have told me, like, you know, that watch the, the I don't know if you, you, you get this impression, too, when you watched it. They're like, hey, Rama, we can barely hear you <laughs> compared to Scott and the other guys. Because <laughs> I'd be, like, talking really softly. It's like, okay, next time I'll just talk really close to the microphone because yeah. you know, I get nervous softly. So that's why I, probably my, my thing, you know, my uh, bug because I get nervous. But um, I think I'm you hold your own, though. I definitely oh. think he. I watched the very first, uh, the first it. episode, and then the second time you were on. And yeah, the <laughs> first time you. you were a little bit quiet, but I was like, how cool of an experience is that to be? I mean, just to be part of the, just part of the film critic society in general is awesome in its own. But to you know, That's be invited true. over to the show, they obviously like what you're doing. They brought you back a few times. It's going to be fun to see more of you on there. Thank you. Yeah, I'm honored. I'm humbled to be part of the LAOFCS. It's a it's a very diverse membership. I guess uh, you know not just uh, written critics, but also YouTubers and podcasters. And of course, ethnic wise, we're very diverse. And we just have we just announce our winners. We'll we'll have our ceremony in January. But you know, uh, so it's an, always an honor to be on the on the show, Popcorn Talk. They're vo- they're they're always welcoming. But h- let me tell you this. Uh, I'm, let me say this to you, Anthony. That um, you know, yes, uh, it's an honor to be on LAOFCS show, but it's also an honor to be on the Dynamic Duo show. So uh, it's, it's equal great. It's equal great, brother. That's why I picked you <laughs> first, man. You're my guinea pig. I was like, you know, I, just let me give you guys a little setup of how this show started. I had an idea, and I had ideas underneath that idea, but nothing was set in stone. And I was like, who would I? Who should my first guest be? And I messaged Rama, and I was like, Rama. I texted him. I was like, I got an idea. I got an idea for a show. It's about this and maybe a little bit of this and and some of this, but maybe not any of that. It could be some of this or some of that. And immediately, I'm 100% in, and I'm, that's awesome, man. I thank you so much. That's why I was like, I think it's kind of nerve-wracking for me to do this show. That's why I was like, I want someone that I could talk comfortably with and that has stuff to say and – that's why I was like, I'm equally thankful for you to be on the show with me. So uh, before we wrap things up, let everybody know uh, what do you uh, any collabs you're working on, any events coming up? What can they expect from you in the next couple of months on the channel and yeah. on the official website? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before I get to that, just want to uh, give you give you a compliment some more. I just said uh, I look up to you because you know you have a full time job. You know, you have a, a house that you decorate. You know, I see your pictures. You know, with the Christmas decorations, you 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 uh, you're married, so you you have this busy life, but you still make time to be a YouTuber. So that's that's awesome, bro. And you, Thank uh, you. I love your I love your insight as a reviewer. So keep up, keep doing what you do, and I think this show is gonna be great, the Dynamic Duos. And for my uh, next stuff, um, uh, as I said, uh, I think I have the LOFCS award coming up in January. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to be star-studded. This past year, we had Gary Oldman and Jessica Chastain show up. We'll see who shows up in this one. Um, and for next week, I'm doing TV interviews with um, uh, a movie called Escape Room. So Deborah oh, Ann Wall. Yes, saw the trailer yeah, for it. Exactly. Deborah Ann yeah. Wall from Daredevil. Uh-huh. Uh, so that's my press junket. And nice. that's it. Looking forward to 2019. Yeah, I'm looking forward to your 2019 too, man. You keep me in the loop of all the stuff going. I swear, it's like I I didn't even really realize it at first until it's like I'm driving around and I'm getting your alerts because I get all your I get your Facebook and the Twitter and the YouTube. So it's like Rama's chiming in. It's like man, he wakes up the same time I wake up almost, and and he's pumping it out all day long. So he's telling me, oh, press release came out for this, press release came out this, press release came out for that, this new trailer dropped for that, and then I go back to look through my emails and I'm looking at all the same, you know. Things that you've already read and you've covered for me. <laughs> but no, man, I, I'm, I'm super thankful that you came onto this show. This is something that I kind of been planning for a while. It's probably gonna definitely gonna have you on again as it gets a little bit more streamlined and I get my foot out of my mouth during some of the different. Uh, I'll, I'll work on my segues, but I don't think I ha- really had any bad ones. But I, I think it went pretty good. I think we had a good time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I like agree. I said, guys, uh, Rama does interviews, press junkets, reviews. Uh, he covers big blockbusters. He covers small films, indie films. He really has just a diverse collection of films. So if you're a movie nerd like we are, you guys got to go to his website, uh, go to his Patreon, go to his Instagram. 
get all the news because literally once you get all of Rama's alerts, you're going to be completely connected into what's going on in the world of movies. And uh, that's what I do. So once again, thank you so much, guys. Thank you for watching the show. I hope you enjoyed the very first episode of Dynamic Duos, and I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave a comment. I would love to hear from you all. Here are some links to some recent reviews just in case you missed them. The link to my official website, all my social media and merchandise store links are going to be down in the description below. And in the event, me talking to you guys about movies every couple days is not enough Anthony in your life. I now have a second YouTube channel with a growing collection of non-movie related content for you guys to check.